Hi there, welcome for another case study. Today we've got an interesting one and one that's, uh, as you'll find out, is a little personal to me in terms of my experience with a certain kind of uh, vendor. Uh, I'm here joined with Hannah Mears, I'm Raj Ja, and let's talk about brand and demand generation. And we're doing another case study. Hannah, what can you tell us about this really interesting provider? This one's fun, especially if you have some kids or if you're a kid at heart. So let's go ahead and dive in and figure out what this case study is about here. They said, Raj, we build custom backyard swing sets and play structures. Customers can customize a play structure based on what they want, adding slides, monkey bars, rope swings, and the like. We do a custom design for them, get it approved by the customer, and then deliver them to the parts to assemble in their backyards. We also offer an assembly service that about a third of our customers take us up on. So this is a swing set company, essentially. They're building your dream playground in your backyard. Raj, what's your personal experience with this? Well, my personal experience is I ordered exactly one of these about, uh, now it must be a 10, 12 years ago, uh, and went through the process of I think wouldn't it be great to have this in my backyard? What would my kids want? Uh, and and that is so I've gone through the entire buying process and uh, you know have experienced it from the other side. So I'm excited to to see how they're doing it and what some of their challenges are because as a consumer I have personal experience uh, in addition to kind of the business context. And maybe you'll get to see then what their situation is and the impact that it's having on their company and from your experience. Maybe some things along the way that you would have said, hey, maybe if this company would have had this, my experience would have been way smoother. So their situation is right now we're mailing catalogs to a 50 mile radius and have a website which shows all our parts. Customers go to our website, fill in a form with the parts they want, and then we call them and talk to them through talk them through the design process. Often customers don't answer the call and don't call back. Nearly all of our business comes from the website forms. So Raj, this may be taking it a little off the path, but something that concerns me with this is why do you think customers aren't calling them back? Yeah, well, they're... If you think about the journey of the customer, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to take myself as an example. I'm really excited about this black backyard uh, playground, and I've got some questions, and I'm thinking, okay, I've seen their catalog online, and I want to order the monkey bars and a slide, and I can see that, and then I have to call them to start the discussion, a very traditional consultation for what is this thing going to be. And so, uh, you know, I submit a form online, and they're going to call me back, and in the meantime what's the next thing that happens? Well, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep on looking. Are they the only vendor? I've, I've called them once, so I'm gonna keep on going. So uh, that's that's kind of what part of the journey is. And well, no wonder they're not really getting a call back or folks aren't answering because they've moved on. So they're losing a lot of folks in that at that point. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe instead of a traditional phone call, now that we're all masters in Zoom and Google Meet, maybe offering that face-to-face -face feature. Anytime you can get someone to look at you and know exactly who you are behind the business, maybe that personal connection, they'll be afraid to go with someone else because they've already seen your face and met you. But let's dive into a little bit of how to fix the sales problem they're having, Raj. So it says, our sales have been flat this year, even though more people have been home to due to the virus. Our competitors have huge demand because parents are looking for things to do at home with the kids. I'm not sure why we're getting lost, what, why we're getting less business. They're getting lost in the process here. So in terms of customer experience, I think that's the main thing we want to hit on first. What can you tell me from the perspective of a former customer that you would be recommending to them in this situation? Yeah, I think the first thing that you have, they have to realize is there are a lot of suppliers. I mean, they, it's there is not just one provider of this, and a lot of them will ship pretty far. I mean, I I, I can't even remember where ours came from, but you know, somewhere in the Midwest, uh, and I'm on the West Coast, so uh, you know, they'll ship all over the place. So you're competing against a, a relatively large pool of competitors, and really, the experience is a core differentiator. What's the experience someone's going to have to bond the potential customer to you? Um, and so it's great that they're calling customers. And as you mentioned, Hannah, uh, you know, Zoom or anything that can that can make a personal bond is a great thing. Um, but what I saw, and uh, even this was, you know, 
many years ago, what I used was the ability to design it yourself a little bit online. Now the final design can't be there, but uh, there was a little program and you could drag over this tower here and then put a slide against it and you could visualize it. Um, that's, that's pretty important because instead of the, oh, I'm gonna submit a form and wait for a callback, now I'm already engaged and I've built something and ha, huh, well, there's a building tool and I don't wanna save all this hard work where I've just assembled this thing and I've shown it you know, to my kid and she's really excited about it. And uh, you know, all of a sudden there's a kind of ownership bias almost that you feel like it's already yours and you're invested in the process. And I think that's one of the pieces that's missing compared to a traditional catalog or static website or something like that. Yeah, show it to a kid. <laughs> that would be the best way because once kids see something, they will pester you until it is in their backyard. Kids do not give up. So maybe you're on that face-to-face -face call and someone's drawing it up for you potentially. Have them bring their kid in because I guarantee you that kid's going to say, yep, this is the exact one I want. But Raj and I are huge fans of this virtual reality experience. And I think we're fans of it because that's really what the future I think is going to be for just about anything that you can think of, business, sports, entertainment. There's going to be this VR type of experience with it. Something that I've noticed recently with a lot of construction and design is looking at different houses. Uh, my boyfriend and I came across a site that actually showed you could design the house based off of different cabinets they offered, countertops, couches, colors of walls, tiles, backsplashes. You could put it all together right there and then it would be it would become your home later. So if we had not already had our heart invested in something else, this would have been something we would have really considered. So this is awesome. I think the virtual reality experience, if you're not taking advantage of it now, this is how you get the leg up on your competition. Do you agree? Yeah, 100% agree. And uh, at least uh, we're saying it's the future, at least with the uh, these particular competitors, it's the present. Mm -hmm. So we already have to realize that for a lot of industries, it's already there. So if your industry is going there and some competitors are there, it's time to catch up right quick. And if you your industry hasn't gone there, being the trailblazer, uh, you know, there's there's real benefit to, you know, being the first one to plant the flag and, and start doing that. Yeah. And I think what you were saying, too, is when you're actually like building these structures and putting them together, maybe make it even easier to make sure that, like you were saying, it wasn't the exact outcome. Find a way to make it the exact outcome so that the customer feels that this product is unique to them. Everybody likes to say they have something different. So ironically, they could design something exactly the same that their neighbor did, but because they felt like they had a hand in the construction process, they feel unique. They want everyone to come see their new playground. And then once everyone sees it, they'll be talking about you and you'll generate new eyes for sure. But Raj, something else that stuck out to me, and I know you probably feel some way about this, catalogs, sending out catalogs, how effective do you think that method is anymore? Well, it, it can be actually. It's the surprising thing about direct mail of any sort is that the our inboxes are relatively empty because uh, you know, for those of us who are ancient like me and can remember 25 years ago, our, our mailboxes would be stuffed full of catalogs and flyers and all kinds of uh, direct mailers. And now, you know, you will still see big brands doing catalogs. So, you know, in, in my household, we'll, you know, the Athleta catalog come, the Land's End catalog will come. And, you know, these are, these are thick. They're, every year, the restoration hardware one comes and that thing is massive. It must cost a huge amount to print it. Now, do you think these companies would really continue doing that if it didn't work? So it, it does work. It can work. You just have to be very thoughtful because you're spending a lot of money for that, that catalog space. And in this particular case, we know that, uh, you know, they are getting some sales. It's flat, but they're coming from somewhere. So that might be a contributing factor. I, I wouldn't be too quick to pass judgment on those old media um, mm -hmm. if it still could be working. Yeah, not passing judgment at all. It's just one of those things you don't hear a ton about sometimes with these new businesses. And I know uh, for my parents, personally, their generations, everyone loves to flip that catalog and find something. It's a safe way. So people who may not love the technology side, your company is also offering them the safe way to find something that they love. So with that being said, Raj, yes, the catalog method is great. We talked about different ways they could be displaying online. What's some other ways they could get more leads? Well, getting leads for this particular kind of thing, actually, it's it's a little easier than for some other kinds of businesses because the, the buyer already knows they want it. 
right? Your kids are getting to a certain age and they're, you know, you want to give them something in the backyard and you see your neighbor might have a swing set and, and you've heard about these things. So you're going to be typing into Google, uh, you know, backyard play structure. So one of the simplest forms is Google advertising, keyword advertising. It's, you know, very old school in the online sense, but just running ads to those keywords and, and sh showing that you offer this kind of structure. Now, uh, the one caveat to that is I would not do those ads and run it to the old website because we know that the website's leaking visitors already. But if, we, if you do have that kind of interactive design and add that feature, then I think it would be great to run ads to that, get people involved in the process. It's just another way to generate more leads. So you're saying they have to create possibly a new website to start bringing in these other unique features. Yeah, well, uh, there's an argument whether it needs to be new or you just need to add that feature front mm -hmm. and center, right? Because it can be a little interactive feature that can be added to the current website. You don't have to, uh, you know, I haven't uh, gone in depth and looked at the website, but it, it's something where you can have this little thing that pops up and design your own. And then it takes them to a separate area of the website. So it doesn't have to be a, a complete rehaul. The feature just needs to be there and needs to be prominent. And this is something they can do themselves? Uh, this would be a little harder to do themselves. This, uh, you know, that kind of development of, of that feature. Uh, my guess is that if you're really good at running a background play structure company, you're probably not a coder. So uh, that's the kind of thing you'd probably uh, have to have uh, hired out. And in terms of the Google Ads portion of it, um, I personally find Google Ads a little bit uh, more difficult than uh, Facebook and Instagram. Thinks, can you do it? Yes. Uh, but in terms of the, uh, the kinds of folks you can get to help you with that, there's a ton of contractors out there. The Google Ads platform is very mature, and it's pretty inexpensive to get somebody to manage that for you. So that's that's definitely all something they can, they can contract out. All great things for this company so far. But Raj, they do have another question for you. The main question we need to cover is, I've let my marketing person go because it seems like he wasn't doing much other than hiring an SEO person and managing the catalog and website. And there wasn't much to show for that $50,000 employee. I'm just not sure what to do next. So I guess the question they're asking is, should they hire? They mentioned they let the marketing person go. So do you think they should hire another one? What are the steps they need to take? Yeah, I, I think really, if you're thinking about return on investment um, of that budget, so you've got a budget of 50000 that they're comfortable spending on uh, lead generation and turning uh, prospects into customers. And I think the best use of that $50,000 would be don't hire someone right now. Use that budget to create that uh, little feature on the website, that interactive feature, because it's you know it's going to cost a bit to develop that, and then use the remainder of that budget to do paid advertising. I think that's a much better way of uh, you know, using those funds, and then getting to a point where it's it's just kind of running on its own, right? It's like you know that this is working, sales are starting to tick up, and then you can say, okay, I I now know that it's working. I can stop the experimentation phase, and now I need to stabilize, and now I can uh, hire a market person it doesn't have to be a terribly senior marketing person at this stage in the company's growth uh, and then they can manage it from then on but i just re redeploy that money towards those projects i think that's the best bang for their buck and i think that's a, a very good point to make raj you've mentioned so many different things here we'll get to summarizing everything for them in a second but something that has been in the back of my mind that i can't let go is my, i have a bunch of baby cousins and the swing set that i had when i was younger was just swings, a slide, and a little thing on top. And that was pretty much it. I've it's been mind blown, I guess you could say, of how many features can be added to these play sets now. They're essentially in a kid's paradise. So I would definitely tell you as well, if you want to be the company to stand out, go directly to these kids and ask them, what would you, what would your dream playset have? Because I guarantee you it's very different than just the traditional swings and slides anymore. I mean, these kids want rock walls, they want rope swings, they want steering wheels, they want pirate ships. There are so many unique ways that you can make your product stand out. It doesn't have to be traditional and maybe don't let it age out. Make it something that these kids can use as they go into their teen years. Don't just focus on these kids being that age range to seven. I know it's important to find your target audience, but maybe being able to tell parents, you talked about the bang for your buck. This could be something that your kids enjoy through longer years of life as well. 
Exactly. And, and I'll just throw one more other thing in there. So we had the play structure and then we didn't move. And now my kids are older and we bought the world's largest trampoline for our backyard. I mean, this thing is literally massive. It takes up like half of our backyard. But uh, let's remember, where did we come from? We came from that play structure. So uh, all of the anyone who buys that play structure is probably going to want a trampoline or something else in five to seven years. So could you become a reseller of trampolines? Can you use your customer base in other ways? There's so many other things that, that can, as the kids get older, that you could offer an existing customer base that could radically expand uh, the revenue potential. Yeah, could your slide go directly down to the trampoline? Or into the pool, I don't know. We are thinking outside the box for you to make your product as unique as possible, but as Raj and I bounce our ideas for our dream as we're going back into our kid years, maybe saying what we would have loved, Raj, from the business standpoint, please go ahead and summarize exactly what this company needs to keep in mind to move forward. Okay, it's, it's actually pretty simple. Really, you have to pay attention to the customer journey. What's the experience and how do you engage them as early on in the process as possible and get them really bonded with you? Uh, that interactive experience is key. You're doing a great job with uh, calling folks up and having that conversation, that consultative sale. That's fantastic. Just engage them on earlier on in the process. And once you fixed that piece, because you're already getting website traffic, uh, once you fix that piece, you should see an improvement in, in sales. And then you could say, okay, now can I lead generate? Now can I go and actually uh, pay to get some clicks from Google for folks who I now know will be sent to a sales and, and uh, indoctrination, if you will, process, which is going to successfully convert into revenue. So I think just one step at a time and uh, it, it'll it'll definitely work out. Baby steps, no pun intended. Baby steps. <laughs> exactly. not here at all, but thank you so much for sticking with Raj and I as we're helping our clients through these situations that they're going through. If you have something similar, please make sure that you're staying tuned into what we have coming next and go back and watch the previous videos because maybe we've already answered some of your questions. Thanks for tuning in with us. All right. Thank you. Take care.